Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up an IV development environment with Docker and VS Code in Ubuntu. So there's a few major steps to this. First is to install Docker, second is to download the Git repository, and third is to set up VS Code and get everything working together. So for the first step we install Docker, we can use the official instructions for this. They will be linked in the documentation, but the easiest way is just to Google Docker install Ubuntu if you can spell and then check the what's in here so do we meet the requirements yep i'm using ubuntu 22.04 so i do you can uninstall any old versions if you have them this is a fresh install so i don't have any and then you can start running through the commands so the first one is to update the repository listings because we need to install some packages to accept docker's gpg key so we can just install the packages. You can check what they will do individually, but overall this is to get the GPG key downloaded. Uh, create the folder that we need to store it in, and then we can download that key. This makes sure that the Docker packages have all been signed correctly and they really are good packages. And then we can add the repository. Uh, then we can update our repository listings because we've just added some more, so we need to find out what's in them. And we don't get the GPG errors, which is nice and then we can install Docker and the related packages. So we click yes on that. These are a little bit large, so they might take some time to install. If this takes too long, I'll just speed it up, but I know they will, because it's nearly 500 megabytes worth of stuff. And all that happens, I'm going to prepare the next command, I'll copy it in. So this next command will run a simple hello world image in Docker, just to make sure that it's all working correctly. But you'll notice that we've had to start this with sudo, Currently only the root user can run Docker and VS Code will not be very happy with us if we leave it that way. So we see on the Docker website there's this Linux post install section that allows you to manage Docker as a non-root user. But you should, before you do this, you should read the warning that they give saying that Docker grants root level privileges to the user. You should read this, see if it affects you. I'm okay with doing this, but you should validate that for yourself. Add the Docker group, it should already exist, but we'll do it as a sanity check and then add the user to that group. You don't need to substitute out this user flag here, it will be done for you by the operating system. And then we can run new group docker, and theoretically this adds the user to the group and everything's fine, but I find VS Code gets a little bit upset if we leave it like this, so I'd recommend that you actually shut down the system at this point and then reboot it to ensure that the user is kind of fully in that group. So I will be doing that now. Okay, we're back and the computer's rebooted. So now as a sanity check, we can put in the command that we had before, but without sudo. And we see that we get this. So from Docker, everything works fine. So the next step is to set up Git. So first step of that would be to install Git. And then change directory to whatever folder you want to download Ivy in. So I will make a folder called Ivy with a capital I and change directory into it. And then we can do git clone double dash recurse submodules. And then the link to your particular fork of IV. You should make a fork rather than using the proper Unify AI one. So I'll put that in now. And we can end the command with the dot to say to clone it into this directory rather than making a new subdirectory. If you want it to make a subdirectory for you, you can leave the dot out. And now if I list files in this directory, see so we've got IV, IV test, and all the other things that you would expect to see. So the next step will be to install VS Code. And VS Code is not available via app. It is available via Snap, but for demonstration purposes, I'll install it via the software center. It's a little bit easier, even if it takes a little bit of time to get started occasionally. And it's so now that the software center is open, search VS Code and we want the code package rather than the code insiders package. The code insiders has this sort of teal green icon. We want the standard one in the blue. And because I've closed it, it doesn't know what's going to, okay. Now that it's worked out what it's doing, we can open up code in this directory. It's easy to do it's the command line there because then it will automatically open in this directory. Uh, trust the authors so that you can actually look at everything and run everything. And then in extensions, there are two that we need. So it's giving me a pop saying dev containers is a recommended extension. That is one that we will need. And the other extension that we'll need is Docker. And we get this little pop-up down at the bottom that says that we have a dev container configuration file. 
Uh, this is a useful pop-up in a second. We should not click it yet. The setup that is included in the repository is designed for deployment usage, for use in continuous integration. It has a small issue that we need to fix. So here we in dot dev container dev container dot json we've got all of these flags for the container we need to add another one so add a comma after post create command and i'm just going to copy the command from the doc to save a bit of time we need here post start command git config global add safe directory and then our workspace folder if we don't do this when we try to run git commands in the container nothing's going to work so once we've closed that we can click on this little open or remote window down here at the bottom and reopening container. If you've used a GitHub code space, this will basically be exactly the same. And here we get this button that says starting dev container show log. I would recommend that you show the log because this step takes a very long time. And if you open the log, you know whether or not it's progressing. You know that it hasn't frozen or done anything you don't want it to do. So I'm going to let that build and I'll be back once it is done. Okay, so now that the container has been built we can now start working on ivy more or less there's a few things we might want to do but everything is here as we would need it and we could just start working immediately but there are a few things that i'll do to start with so down here i'm going to click this little plus to open up a new bash terminal in the container itself and i'm going to run pip install pre-commit a little bash in pre-commit and we'll then run pre-commit install what this will do is this will set up some hooks so that whenever you try to add code to your repository, it will run linting checks to it to ensure that there's no formatting errors and that everything looks tidy. And yeah, that's basically it. You're now ready to do development in on Ivy. So hope this helps and thank you for watching.